Good morning all. Today I want to take a look at this. It is a smart meter. In fact it's a single phase smart meter and it's the type that has a DIN rail uh, mounting at the back and fits into a consumer unit otherwise known as a distribution board for mains electricity. Now the main feature of this is that it's Wi-Fi Wi-Fi and it's compatible with the Tuya smart system so what I can do is put this into my consumer unit and uh, in the solar power circuit and when the solar system is generating more than say 800 watts I can get it to uh, automatically switch on one of my cryptocurrency miners now at the moment I do that manually in the morning I keep checking the uh, the inverters output when it's generating enough to turn on a miner, I turn on a miner. This could do it automatically. So let's have a quick look around this and then I'll take it apart. So here it says that uh, live in is one, live out is two. Now they're both on the bottom. So live in is one, live out is two. Uh, three and four are neutral. And as I remember it, because I have had this apart, there's just simply a big bus bar running across there but of course it requires neutral on here to power up the circuitry to get this LCD up and running and get the Wi-Fi unit communicating and all that sort of stuff. Right let's take the screws out of the bottom there are two screws in here and have a look oh that one's behind the DIN Oh, I can get to that if I push that down. Okay. I'll switch to my slightly narrower screwdriver and take that screw out. So does this have clips at the side? I think it might. Oh yes it does. Now if I take this off gently I think I might be able to get it off without unplugging the front circuit board. On the other hand that may not happen. Oh yes, I've managed it. So there, that's an LCD. Uh, that's the button for the little switch here. We've got three LEDs. And then this daughter board, which also appears to contain the Wi-Fi module slung underneath, uh, should come away from the main board on these little uh, well, they're not 0.1 inch, they're probably 2 mil DuPont style pins. So let's have a closer look at this board. We have a Wi-Fi module, a type TYWE3S. I don't really know what that means. Oh, that's repeated there next to the strip antenna. Um, there is a microcontroller on this bottom board. And there's X1 here at a funny jaunty angle. It's a sort of long thin black box. I'm assuming a ceramic resonator, but it could be a crystal, I suppose. And on the top, uh, we've seen LCD button and three LEDs. Ah, now what do these say? Alarm, com. Okay, let's get a, go a bit further into this. This just appears to be clipped in. There are screw holes here, but uh, they've not been fitted for whatever reason. Okay, let's try and get this out. And uh, there it is, but it's wired to all the stuff underneath. So I'll just tip that to one side. Okay, inside here we have live coming off the red. Um, there's a big black thing in the bottom of here, and that is a relay. Now, in the last video where I looked at this, I discovered that this is normally closed. So when you energize it through these uh, red and yellow wires, uh, which I believe is nine volts, I think it says that somewhere, uh, it pulls the relay in, which disconnects the link between live in and live out. Now, there's a section there which is slightly silvered and blue and yellow wires either side of it. So that's the current shunt. Um, there's a neutral connection, this white wire, over to the neutral bus bar here. 
So this thing can measure um, voltage across red and white. It can measure current flowing through this shunt on the yellow and blue wires. Uh, also in here we have, that looks like a capacitor because it's marked 681, 10K681. So I'm guessing that's a capacitor. There's a large value or at least a large power rated resistor there. Uh, it's probably a low value. I can't see it. Brown, black, brown, 100 ohms. Three uh, electrolytics here, little inductor there. Um, I'll see if I can get a shot of that relay. Yeah, so that is an FC808. You can see it says there coil 9 volt DC. Something written after that, but I can't see what it is. Uh, 80 amps, 250 volts AC. And then lots of stuff which I'm having difficulty. Oh, the FC808 again down the bottom. Uh, 9 volt DC for the coil again and some other stuff just try and get a close-up of the connections on that shunt there I don't quite know how those are attached on but they look a bit Ugh. but uh, certainly yeah red would be the direct live tap and blue and yellow are across that shunt area okay so i think i'm going to put this back together and then i'm going to attempt to power this up with some mains i'll probably take mains from a power bank rather than live mains because i think power bank mains is probably less dangerous so slip that under that clip and now i've got to see why it doesn't want to go back down Oh, okay. I think it's fine. Oh, yeah. There are some little um, plastic pips. These little pips here that sit in slots in the circuit board. So that certainly provides the positional alignment. I mean, the only real thing that requires positional accuracy is the push button and the LCD. Okay, let's put this back on the top with all its connections. And then... Uh, Put the front back on and that uh, I don't know whether that has clips no I think that's just screwed on but it was a bit tight getting it off but... yeah that seems to have gone back on okay I'll screw that together and then we'll get some mains on it so I'm wiring up a plug with two black wires um, live and neutral aren't really different, I think, from a power bank. I think the only thing that differentiates neutral from live on the mains is the fact that it's earthed at the substation. Um, so from a mains generating power bank, live and neutral are essentially the same, I think. Right, there we go. So uh, two black wires on live and neutral. Let's put the lid on this plug. Go and get oh a small power bank that has a mains facility. Power this up. So I'm going to use the small Jackery, the Jackery 240. Um, plug that into there. I'm not going to switch it on yet because I don't have my wires wired up. Actually, I was wondering if I um, touched one of these wire ends when this is on with one finger. Obviously, I wouldn't do that sort of thing and put... Uh, one on each hand, that would be dangerous. But if I just touched one and brushed against it, would I even feel it? Because nothing is referenced to ground. The other end would be floating around. What do you think? So live in is one. I'm, I'm gonna use live in. It wouldn't really matter if I used live out because as I say, the relay is closed. But um, I wanna do that because I might put a load on live out and then we can see whether this LCD works. I wonder if it's back illuminated. I didn't see a back illumination light. Uh, neutral can go to either one of the neutrals up here. They're just bust together. I've got a feeling that one had the wire on it, but it doesn't really matter at all. So let's screw that into there. Of course, these screws are live, which is why you've got these 
covers. Oh, that's fallen out. Why has that happened? Right, stand back a little bit and turn on the mains output. Oh, and we've got something on the display. Let's have, a, oh, and some flashing lights. Are they all blue? No, it's just the middle one flashing at the moment. And that is the Wi-Fi light, it would appear. Now I'm guessing that this flashing LED means that this is in pairing mode. I'm gonna run up the Lidl Home app. I do also have the Tuya Smart app, but actually the Lidl Home app, if you back out of it, says tap again to exit to your smart so the little home app is the to your smart app right if you push and hold the button for 10 seconds then this flashes at half speed and it is putting out an ssid i can't show that because i can't really show my home ssid so i'm going to connect to smart life 108 or whatever it said well after a huge amount of fiddling about i've managed to get meter to appear here. Now I've never installed a Wi-Fi device before so that's probably why. Um, I got it to work on the Tuya Smart app first but you can actually make it work on the Lidl app if you fiddle about. So let's go to meter and there's a huge power on button and if I press it there's a big click. This light comes on which I think means that the relay is energized and therefore this thing has shut off or at least it's switched off its link between live in and live out um, but I don't want to cut the power particularly because uh, when I connect this into my solar power system that would cut the solar off which is not what I want what I really want is the electric stuff which is down here and that's showing me that there is an accumulated total of 0.12 kilowatt hours I don't quite know how uh, unless it's this thing just had some residual data in it we've got a voltage of 228.4 and it measures power and current in milliamps. So I need to put a load on this thing really. Um, but what I can't see here is there are two registers in here which you can select with this button. Can you see that? It is visible actually. You have to press and hold it for uh, slightly longer than... Ah, is that, that's the pulsing thing. Um, so that's I v22 something it's very hard to see that it's by power naught uh, q power factor 1.0 uh, frequency 50.24 that says all zeros 0.1 and that says all zeros and i think one of those is the uh, forward power uh, counter and one of them is the reverse power counter I'll have to look further into that. Right, I've attached a bulb on here, LED filament bulb. So it's not taking a huge amount of power. Just want to check the on off thing first. Obviously the relay switches the bulb off. And back on again. Now if I go into electric, we've got current LE, 28 milliamps. Uh, current power 3.2 watts, 230 volts. Uh, let's unscrew that if I can. How quickly does this respond? Oh, reasonably quickly. Power zero. Screw it back in. Little bit of a delay. Power 3.3 watts. Well, it seems to work. Well, the manual says that it's got total energy kilowatt hours, positive kilowatt hours and reverse kilowatt hours. So there's my connection, I've got live going into live out and my load, the lamp, going into live in. And on the app, it still seems to measure uh, power correctly. So it doesn't seem to mind which way you draw power through this thing. It measures it as positive power. So that's gone to zero and the current also. And let's see if this goes back up to about three watts which was what it was showing yeah so you can have this either way around but on the display because you've got the positive uh, kilowatt hours counter and the negative kilowatt hours counter um, it makes sense to put this the right way around for solar now of course solar uh, feeds power from the solar from the inverter back into your mains 
so I do need to think about getting this the right way around. And then the next thing is can I set up an automation for switching the miners on. Now you can see my current automations are green shed overheat Lola 46 goes off. Lola 46 is one of the um, three L3 plus ant miners. The other ones are Lexi and Lottie and the number there is the IP address. I've given them all L, uh, names beginning with L. If the modular shed overheats it turns both the miners off. That's Lexi and Lottie. But I want to set up an automation so that's plus um, when device status changes and it will be the meter uh, oh switch one I'm not really interested in that yes power and we've got watts that's good so if I get more than about 800 watts oh that's a lot of watts oh that's a lot of watts so it's right near the bottom Okay, it's rather fine grained, but there we are, 800 watts. Uh, then I can, well, notify myself, but also run the device and that will be on the power strip. And what's all that? I don't know what those are. That's really peculiar. But anyway, there are my three miners, uh, Lola 46, Lottie 45 and Lexi 43. And I can select one of them to switch on. I shan't bother going through all that now. But yes, I can certainly automate the miners coming on at certain power levels. Excellent. So that's the DDS 238-2 uh, Wi-Fi energy meter, which you put in your consumer unit. Now I've just got to summon up the courage to actually do that and put it in there and have it uh, have the solar power go through it so that I can measure it and the little diagram uh, shows a not very impressive curve. I think yesterday was better. Mm, bit of cloud day before. Oh yes, that was a near perfect day of almost completely full sun. Little bit of cloud there at the end of the day. Ah, oh, that's interesting. With these connections wired up backwards, um, I pressed the big button and turned the power off to the relay which of course has now isolated it from the incoming mains from the power bank and it won't turn back on and even if I turn the power bank off that relay doesn't fall out so I think that relay is a is a slide relay that's um, able to stay in both positions without power yes that's interesting it's not a, a permanently energized relay so that's a little look at the DDS 238-2 uh, Wi-Fi in consumer unit or distribution box meter. A couple of other things I've noticed. The total cumulative um, energy in kilowatt hours, there doesn't appear to be any way to reset that. I've tried all combinations of pressing this button and looked all throughout the app. So I don't think that can be reset. Um, I did discover a treble click one, two, three, toggles the relay and then treble click again to toggle it the other way. So you can control the relay from this button. Um, the press and holds are press and hold for about a second to flip through all the different display modes on the LCD. Press and hold for five seconds to do an init, but I'm not entirely sure what an init does because it doesn't reset the cumulative counters. Press and hold for 10 seconds and it resets the Wi-Fi details and then you'd have to put those in again. But uh, that's it, I think, for looking at this. I think the next thing I'm going to do is put it in my solar fuse box. But for the moment, cheerio.